Billionaire hedge fund manager Paul, Paul, John Paulson, rather, who's been uh, betting that gold would rally as a hedge against inflation, has lost 63% year-to-date in the PFR Gold Fund. He told clients that he wouldn't personally invest more money in the gold fund. Now, is gold losing its shine? To answer that question for us is Paul Walker, CEO of Isondo Precious Metals. He joins us now on the line for more. Paul, when you were uh, listened to uh, the sentiments regarding uh, Mr. Johnson, they said deciding not to purchase any more gold uh, in, and purchase it into his uh, portfolio. Are you surprised by those sentiments? Well, I guess the thing that I'm really surprised at is how long he's taken to reach that conclusion. You know, the end game for gold has been playing out over the last few years. As I've repeatedly said over the years, it's going to be an interest rate story. Eventually, gold will, uh, will weaken. But it's something that he should have understood the dynamics of this market you know, many, many years ago. And when gold peaked, if he had pulled out gold at that time, he would have returned a lot of uh, money to his shareholders, the hedge fund uh, clients he has. And I, as I say, I'm just surprised that it's taken him this long to have the epiphany. So if it's taken him this long, when would you have pulled out of uh, gold's uh, shares in instead? Well, I think I would probably have been out of gold at you know, $1,600, $1,700, to be honest. I, I was a little skeptical that gold could push up to the highs that it did of close to $2,000. But you know, the, the underlying dynamic of this market has to be understood to understand why I'm saying what I'm saying. The uh, market has been completely dependent on investment flows now for the better part of seven or eight years. It's only about investment flows into this market. So the next question to ask is why are the investment flows into gold have, have they been as strong as they've been over the last seven or eight years? The reason is an interest rate story. It's about the backdrop of low interest rates, no yield, the search for yield. And, um, you know, the, the reality is uh, gold has done incredibly well. And I think people have uh, unreasonably expected gold to carry on rallying on through to the high 2000s and beyond. The reality is the, uh, the, the market is now changing. The idea that gold can continue rising in the face of potential tapering, interest rates rising, it's just not on. And I think, you know, there's investor fatigue and people are getting out. Just on that, Paul, are they, uh, how strong or how significant are some of the influencing factors? You mentioned interest rates. There's potential tapering that could play, take place uh, as, as early as next year, as well as sluggish economic growth. Well, I think the, the gold story is first and foremost, it's an interest rate story. And, you know, we've been, you know, when I, in my previous incarnation at GFMS, uh, we used to go out on the record as saying it's about the search for yield in a zero interest rate environment or negative real interest rate environment. There were other you know, minor factors at play, and obviously the, the financial crisis, uh, the build-up to that, played a role in it. But fundamentally, it's about interest rates. And investors are sat on an asset that uh, generates no yield. The only yield you get is through capital appreciation. And you know, the, I think there's just a realization now that the gold story is running its course. I'm not suggesting for a moment that gold is going to you know, uh, be sub-$1,000 in, in a few short months. But the end game is being played out. You've got investor fatigue. They're looking at the likely outcome for interest rates, which is one direction. It's going to go up uh, globally. US dollars, euros, you are going to see interest rates move. And as soon as that happens, gold really will come under pressure. But the, the, the problem that it faces is to maintain uh, even at $1,200 or $1,300, you need substantial net new inflows of cash every month to keep it going. And what you're seeing now is investors like John Paulson saying, well, not only are we not going to put new money into it, but probably there are quite a few people who are starting to pull money out of gold. And that's uh, going to be catastrophic for the long-term uh, gold price, in my view. Paul, if the sentiment is so negative against the metal, what about the gold mining companies? In SA, we know that we're facing our own means of turmoil, but uh, your thoughts on gold mining companies? Well, you know, the problem with the South African miners is that, in my view, they've missed the boat. I have regularly stated this, that they should have uh, got back into hedging in U.S. dollar terms, not in the way they did back in the 1990s in extremists. They should have hedged into strength. Uh, there are a whole raft of uh, hedging options that were available to the miners. I think they've missed the boat on that. Uh, and, you know, I've also made the, the point that it's not just about their shareholders, it's about their stakeholders. And I think the, the South African gold mining sector is going to remain under tremendous pressure. Not only are you going to see the uh, dollar gold price going down, you may see the RAND riding to the rescue in the short term. But the long-term structural weakness of South African gold mining does concern me. I think what they should have done 
six or seven years ago is they should have had the courage of their convictions to pull the trigger on some hedging uh, options so they could have locked in very high dollar prices. Then they could have looked at how they run their minds and focus on the things they can control, hmm. which are their costs. And they haven't done that. Well, it seems as though well, we're not so bullish on the bullion anymore. But thank you so much to Paul Walker, Chief Executive of Isondo Precious Metal.